In today's video, we are going to look at how you can create a consolidated report that pulls data from various different Google Sheets files. So here you can see an example. In column A, I pull all the names from a spreadsheet that is titled the class list. I also have the column B, which is going to pull all the end of year results from the reading tracker. So you can see that here. This is pulling the information from this column. I then also pull the final writing results from another spreadsheet. This spreadsheet right here, pulling that into that same file. And finally, I have some important dates that are kept in and again another file. We all have many different files in our schools and on our networks. So these can be updated and then it's automatically pulled into my spreadsheet. As these are updated, in each individual file, my master file or my consolidating report will automatically update as well. So let's get started. How do we do that? Well, let's create a brand new spreadsheet. I'm going to start by clicking on File, New Spreadsheet. This is a blank spreadsheet. So let's just add our column headings so we know what we're doing. So first of all, we are going to add the student names. These will be pulled from the class list. Then we will add the end of year results for reading. That will go in the column C. We will also add the end of year for writing. That will go in column E. And then to make it even more interesting, in H we are going to do dates. These are the important dates that all our teachers have to be aware of when they have to put their data in the trackers when those trackers are updated and who's responsible for what. That will come from this spreadsheet here, demo data drop dates. Now, the great benefit to doing it this way is that each individual file can be shared with different people and they automatically feed into that master spreadsheet. So let's go ahead and do the first part. We need our student names. Now we're going to use a special formula for this. It's called the import range. Now, when we type equals import range, and this is now going to allow us to pull data from another spreadsheet, another file. We need the URL and we need the range. So let's go ahead and open up that demo class list. This is the list. We're going to copy the URL here at the top. So let's go ahead and copy that URL. And then the range that we need to pull in is A2 all the way down to A24. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to import our range, open your double quotations, paste the URL, double quotations. And we're going to add a comma and again, open those double quotations. The first thing we have to do is tell it which sheet it will find that information in. So here at the bottom, we can see this is titled sheet one with a capital S. So let's make sure that we do that. So we're going to add that into our formula. We're going to type sheet one. That was the sheet exclamation mark very important which range well a2 all the way down to a24 close those quotation marks and close our formula or our function i'm going to enter and you will see there is going to be a little error here you can see there is a reference error that is because we have to give it access to that file that means that this file does not have access to the other file yet so what we do is we're going to click on allow access. As soon as it has access, it automatically updates that here. Let's test and see if it's live. So I have my sheet here. I'm going to add a name. So let's add John to this as I enter. And let's see if it updates. There we go. John is pulled into this spreadsheet. Great. We have this working. All good. We can now remove John again. Now, using this way of importing names from a class list, also make sure that you are consistent in terms of the order that you are adding data points. So, for example, in my assessment tracker, CT Ron Tom, I need to make sure that my writing tracker, CT Ron Tom, uses the same order. Simply pull that data from a centralized name sheet, and then everything will always be in the same order. You don't have to edit 20 different files when new students join. You simply edit the master file and everything else is automatically edited for you. 
Now let's pull in our first assessments. I want to pull in this one here. This is my reading tracker. So let's copy that URL, go to our spreadsheet and again, equals import range. We're going to import range, open quotations, paste that link, close the quotations, comma. Open the quotations, give it a range. Now this one will be a little bit different because as you can see in this original file, we have two different sheets in this workbook. The one we want is called tracker year one. So we have to make sure that we use the same name of the sheet where it will find that data. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to type tracker with a capital T space year one exclamation mark. And now we have to give it the range, which cells is it going to reference? Well, I want the end of year cells here. So that is P and it's going to start at five all the way down to 29. So P5 down. So we're going to go P5 to P25. Close those quotation marks. Close my function. Enter. Same thing. Reference error because it doesn't have access yet. Allow access. And it's automatically going to pull those in. So you can see here, it's automatically pulling in those bands. Let's go ahead and change one. Let's say that Ron did not finish at band 10. So let's go to our master. Let's say that Ron actually finished at a band 11. Well, this automatically updates our master as well, our consolidated report. We're now going to do the same with the end of year writing. Again, equals import range. There we go. We're going to open our double quotations, get our reading data, copy that URL. Now here at the bottom, you can see it's in sheet one. So we're going to use that. We're going to paste the URL, close the quotations. We're going to say it's in sheet one, exclamation mark. And then the range that we need is N5 down. So N5 all the way down to N25. Close, close, enter. Again, give it access allow access. You can see everything works beautifully. Now let's say that you have much larger ranges. For example, here we have our data drop dates. This is a very large range. There's a lot of information here that needs to be transferred over. You can see it's all the way from A4 down to D14. So if I don't want to make any mistakes typing that in, what I can do is I can use something called named ranges. So let's do that. Let's create a named range. I'm going to select everything in this sheet. So from A1 all the way down to D14. This is going to become a block of content where I'm going to name this data drop dates. So here with everything selected, I'm going to go to the top data and I am going to create a named range. You can see here it says named ranges. I'm going to click on that. And I'm going to name this range data drop dates, always with a capital letter there. So remember that data drop dates. If you're not sure, you can always copy this so you can use that later. Done. From now on, Google Sheets is going to recognize this entire area as data drop dates. That means I can use that in my functions. So let's go back to my master. Under the important dates, I'm going to type equals import range. Again, import range. I'm going to give it that URL. So let's give it the URL here at the top of this spreadsheet. And there we go. Close those quotation marks, comma, open. And now instead of typing the sheet name and the range, I'm just going to type data drop dates. Close my quotation marks and enter. This will act exactly the same way as manually typing the row and column. Reference error, allow access, and it automatically pulls everything in. So you can see here, it pulls in all those dates. Now all that's left for us to do is format this master page and it'll automatically keep everything up to date, interactive, and easily the best way to make sure that all your data is not duplicated in multiple places. 
Rather than duplicating that data, you're pulling it from various sources into a single master spreadsheet. Now, I hope you found this helpful. If you did, I have another video that will show you how you can create basic reports with drop downs and setup sheets if you click on the link at the top. I also want to say a quick thank you to all the channel members who are making it possible to continuously make new content just like this. Thank you. Thank you for your support. And if you too would like to become a channel member, make sure that you scroll down to the bottom and click on that join button to become a channel member. We have a growing community of members and it'd be great to see you join us as well. In the meantime, thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.